2022, I fulfilled a lifelong dream of mine by bidding on two wild Mustangs in the BLM online auction. Mm -hmm. Hi. One of the downsides about having horses in the suburbs, especially wild ones, is that Halloween and all the fireworks, um, I'm assuming, has made them more nervous of us. But they're checking out the grocery bag full of grass that I brought in. See? Slowly but surely their confidence grew and they started to get more and more comfortable with my presence and I started to notice differences every day. But things like the weather and any noises going on in the environment would also change how they felt about me at any given time because they would have triggers that stack and then my presence would be all the more scary on an already moderate baseline level of stress from other stressors in the environment. They were quite afraid of helicopters and airplanes in the beginning and something like that would make them nervous and they would respond more fearfully to things that I did that they could normally take in other situations. I think Juniper and Mesa both really started to enjoy my mom and I's presence and look forward to us coming to see them, even if they were still initially nervous of us, because there was a lot of things that even as they were comfortable with our presence being near them, that they weren't super comfortable with and they needed practice for, and it's taken them time to build that comfort level. Soon they started greeting me at the gate, and when they saw my truck, they started to recognize it and wait for me, and that was a huge reward, is having them notice my presence and want to come towards me, because it was showing that how they perceived me was starting to change, which was really, really important to me, and it was just such a lovely thing to see, because they were starting to actually like having me around, rather than just tolerating it. We'll see. Juniper is gonna definitely get tame first, I think, because she's just a little bit less shy than Mesa. I spent a lot of time observing the two fillies and it taught me a lot about their individual personalities and where their strengths and weaknesses were. Juniper the chestnut was a lot more interactive with people and very, very curious and a little bit more comfortable coming near people than Mesa, but Mesa was very confident in other ways. She just wasn't as comfortable with people directly interacting with her or trying to touch her, but she was very good at like, say, self-haltering. Um, but she would struggle in other ways where Juniper would hold strengths. So I started to view Juniper as much more of an extroverted horse and Mesa as much more introverted because Mesa kind of kept to herself a little bit more and she needed to take more breaks on average than Juniper did where she would take herself away to self-regulate and then come back. What I also noticed about Mesa is that she has some scarring on her eye and she's missing a piece of her lower eyelid. So I think she has some vision loss and she clearly had some sort of accident with her eye. Who knows if it happened while she was wild or when she was in captivity, but it's something that I noticed and that was something that made her a little bit more nervous of things and that I had to take into account for my training with her. I also found out that another horse during her capture actually tried to jump over one of the corral panels and broke its neck and died and had to be euthanized. So I know that she might have had some trauma during her roundup in addition to being in the holding pens. Since these girls are sales strike horses, it means that they've gone through the auction more times and have been in the holding pens for longer, which adds to stressors in itself, especially if they didn't like it there or there was anything that was stressful day to day with people. So they developed a very negative association with human beings because humans usually predicted feeling fearful and when humans approach them at the corrals, usually they're getting moved from pen to pen. So they learn how to move away from people because they're used to getting moved with like flags into shoots so that they can move them onto trailers and into different areas, which isn't a bad thing because it's practical for the type of setup that they have at the corrals and the nervousness of the horses but it does teach them that human beings mean move away if a human being steps towards you move away and be a little scared so I was having to counter condition them to all of those previous associations You guys. 
One of the biggest challenges I had with these fillies is trying to get them to eat treats that didn't resemble grass or hay. In the beginning, I was feeding them using hay and sprouted barley or fodder. And then I moved to using alfalfa chaff because they didn't want to accept any treats or cut up carrots or anything. I tried leaving stuff out for them. I tried feeding them by hand and they weren't into it. So I had to use a fairly low value reinforcer. And if I was able to use a higher value one, I think I would have been able to make things have moved even faster. But there was the roadblock of them not knowing that normal horse treats were food. The use of food was really valuable in this way for helping condition them to enjoy my presence and have something valuable to counter condition previously negative emotions that they may have held towards people or at least just stress or fear. I wanted to reward their natural curiosity and I also wanted to reward me touching them because initially even if horses will like scratches, if they're afraid of people, the act of touching them is aversive and scary. So I was pairing that with the reward of food to help them start to first tolerate my touch and then later hopefully enjoy it. But toleration and just handling it calmly without fleeing was the first goal for touching and handling them. Juniper is very extroverted and was really into training and she was much more enthusiastic for training a lot quicker than Mesa was to the point where she would be trying to vie for my attention while I worked with Mesa. She jumped it. She jumped the log. <laughs> What are you guys doing? Why are you so excited? Oh, <laughs> you guys are so silly. You're being so silly today. I taught them to halter by teaching them to target the halter first and then start to put their nose through it. This was important because since they're in a field where they can get away from me, I can't force the halter on because if I try to get it on too quickly and they bulk, then they have a whole field to run away from me from. And then I've also taught them that the halter is scary and aversive, which means the next time I try to introduce it, it's going to be inherently more difficult. So it was of the utmost importance to not scare the crap out of them with the halters and not try to move too quickly because something natural, like being a little bit nervous of the halter, if they spook and flee, they can get way more distance and then they can start being afraid of the object from further away. So working with these girls really required me to be conscious of how I trained and meticulous about my timing and how quickly I shaped things. I couldn't get greedy, otherwise I would ruin what could otherwise be a good session. I wanted to stay within their comfort zones and make it pleasant for them while still pushing them out of their comfort zones enough that they could learn and start to get more and more comfortable with me. Mm-hmm. Teaching them how to target my hand was also initially helpful because it allowed me to start to touch their faces and get them comfortable with my hands reaching towards them. And it allowed me to get much closer to them and start touching their necks and toying with their collars much quicker than I think they would have if I hadn't initially taught them the hand target from further away where they could approach my hand themselves rather than me just reaching towards them because when I reached towards them they would often back away and that would be reinforcing in itself because the act of backing away allows them to get distance from me and then that's reinforcing to them because they're a little bit more comfortable at a distance. So my goal in this way of training was to not have them feel the need to create distance to the best of my abilities. Some levels of fear are normal and sometimes they were a little evasive, like taking a step or two back, but I viewed that as more of an attempt at self-regulation rather than firing backwards and really trying to get away from me, but it is still a sign that they're uncomfortable and my goal is to get them more and more comfortable.
The other challenges that we ran into were just the winter weather also. The timing that I got these Mustangs in meant that we were going into winter, which is very wet where I live, but we also had an unseasonably cold winter with a lot of wind and really frigid temperatures up to minus 20 Celsius. So that posed some difficulty because it made it more difficult to work with them in an outdoor setting. And it meant that I had to do shorter sessions on a lot of days, which prolonged how long this took for me to work with them. Because if I would skip days or have really short sessions, then they would kind of start to get a little bit cautious again when we started working on behaviors that they hadn't done for a little bit. But as weather started to get better, I was more we were able to work with them regularly and we were really starting to make progress with the longer days and not having it get dark as soon as it does here in the winter. <laughs> What's wrong, Juniper? Is she bothering you? Okay, I'm gonna just leave her alone. Still nervous around new people, so they weren't sedated enough for my vet to handle them yet. So we're going to be doing that later on once I get them more used to other people. So I've been getting more people to come in and help me with handling them because they don't behave the same around other people as they do with me. Um, and especially if like other people come in with me, as soon as there's more than one person in here, they're way more on guard and you can't handle them as much or do as much as you can when I'm with them alone. Um, which has been a challenge too because a lot of the people that I work with are busy and they can't necessarily come and handle them and there's also not that many horse people that I would actually trust to come here alone when I'm not around and handle them. So I either have to link up and have them come when I'm here or find people that will come alone. But most of the time it is just me coming which is great because they trust me um, a lot but it does have its own challenges because it means that they're significantly more comfortable with me than they are with other people and I am going to need to get them handled by other people. So you can see June on her neck on this left side. I can touch it a lot less like she's much more nervous and she'll back off a little bit. What I do like is that even when I keep my hand there that she doesn't keep backing up because in the past if I kept my hand there when they backed up they would just leave. Um, and they used to be really really flinchy of me touching them like it's hard to explain because even in the videos I've taken I've watched them back and it's not as noticeable because you can't actually feel how their skin is reacting to your touch. Um, but when I used to start trying to get them to take food from my hands, if they even brushed my hand with their lip, they would like jerk back and flinch back and wouldn't want to touch it. Um, if my hands smelt funny and I'd been doing anything like eating human food or doing anything slightly suspicious, they wouldn't want to take food from me. And they very much tried to avoid touching my hands at any point, even if I had food that they liked. Now they're, they're fine with touching my hands, even if I've been eating something before and I smell funny. Um, so that's a pretty huge change. The other thing too would be that they're just way more jumpy. Like they definitely still spook more than an average horse, but they used to jump at everything. And if something else scared them, like see like that where she jumps away, because something surprised her a little bit. And there's some trigger stacking because someone in the other yard is using a saw. Um, but they would jump away and they wouldn't come back and there was a bunch of times where I'd lose them for the rest of the session there. Whereas now, even if they go shooting off, like I've had a couple of times where something has really scared them, like a branch breaking and falling, and they've gone running off away from it, but then they come right back. So that's the huge difference is that they're kind of like boomerangs now. When they do leave, they always come back. I don't have as hard of a time getting them to re-engage. And even with this tripod that I built, they don't like it. You can see them staring at it. June's like, what the hell? So working with two of these horses at a time and not having somewhere to separate them also posed a unique difficulty because it meant that I had to alternate working with horses and that I could accidentally frustrate them or miss behaviors that I would have wanted to reward because I'm working with the other horse or may have my back turned. So that posed a unique difficulty, but it also was a benefit from the standpoint of having them have each other to lean on and gain comfort from. They've gone through similar things are similar ages and can share an experience in addition to having been able to keep each other company in the horse trailer. My goal with these girls is to continue working with them and get them to the point where I can start them under saddle at liberty because again I want them to be able to choose to participate in that and I want to make it a really cool process like that. As their confidence grows, they start moving ahead quicker and quicker, and it's really neat what they're comfortable with as days go on, and it's been so cool to watch their personalities unfold as they get more comfortable around me.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm tripping. I almost fell down. Since my goal is to do all these things with them at Liberty, I'm going on their timeline and it's up to them to decide when they're comfortable with things. And if they aren't getting comfortable with something, then it's up to me to discover why and address that. Because Liberty allows horses to be fully honest with you and leave when they don't want to participate or panic if they get really scared. And it takes away any ability to really put a stop to that in the same way that you can if you have them fully tacked or someone holding them or even just in a round pen. So you have to be a lot more meticulous about how you train in order to avoid that for safety purposes. Which is why these foundational steps I think are so important because the initial foundation from the ground is how you set the tone for making things under saddle way easier because you don't have that baseline level of fear that's generally already present on the ground but gets compounded when you try to sit on them. I want these girls to be really reliable mounts for someone one day or for myself one day and the only way I can do that is by creating trust in people which inevitably will take more work when the horse has had a reason to not have trust in humans because you're fighting against previously bad experiences rather than just creating new ones. How freely these girls communicate with me has also been super cool because they've realized that I listen. So they're so subtle with their behavior, but they also make an effort to try to show me how they're feeling and it makes it so much easier to avoid overwhelming them. Hi, ladies. Aw, thank you. So nice. 